it's time to talk about AI art, okay? We got a lot to talk about. So, <clears throat> where to begin? I have a lot of opinions about art. I talk about art. I make, excuse me, I make art. I consume art. I have a lot of opinions about art. And as it turns out, some of those opinions make other people angry. And one of those opinions uh, made people very, very angry. Let me show you real quick, just like, just how much I'm talking about right now, okay? So this is a tweet I made yesterday at 3.22 p.m. It's actually really funny. I made this tweet like while I was extremely tired and about to go to bed and it was, and anyway, it made me laugh. The responses I was getting to it made me laugh really hard. Um, yeah, that's not like me, Demon Mama. You never have takes which make people angry. But so this got 2,000 likes, which is, you know, that's pretty damn good for one of my tweets. That's, that's a lot of, that's a lot of uh, engagement. Um, and then it also got 47 quote retweets and over 170 retweets. And, uh, it was very interesting to me. It was a, it was something of a, 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 uh, almost like a psychological experiment because, uh, seeing the responses to my tweet, which I'm going to read my tweet was certainly very, very interesting. So we're going to talk about both my take in general and the responses to the tweet um, because I think that's funny to do. Uh, and I think that uh, it's gonna be really funny once you guys see what I'm talking about with some of these responses, okay? So uh, let me, before we do anything else, let me lay out my basic take on AI art before we even go to the tweet, before we get into the memery, because I wanna, I wanna, I wanna start in the kindly, uh, the kindly mental vibe zone that will get people prepared because I'm not going to be as kindly as things go on and there's a number of reasons for that and, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain, okay? So here's my basic opinion on AI art. Uh, I don't think that most of what we refer to nowadays it, as AI art, you know, like doll e mini and a lot of these AI art tools are art. That doesn't mean they're not creative. That doesn't mean they're not enjoyable. That doesn't mean they're not fun um, or that they're not capable of beauty. I just don't think that they meet by themselves, in and of themselves, what I would consider art. Now, of course, art is completely and utterly subjective, just like everything else in the entire world, more or less. Art is subjective, and it is my subjective opinion that AI art isn't art, at least not by itself. Now that doesn't mean that AI art can't be used as a part of something better or that AI art can't be provocative or interesting. I just don't think that it meets the definition of art. And the reason for that is because I believe art to be a, a creation of a thinking sentient being. That is what I believe art to be. Art for me requires a social element and an element of intent. And so, uh, and I think that's a fairly, uh, like a, 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 a fairly reasonable uh, definition. Um, do, you, do you consider landscapes art? Uh, landscapes, you mean like the landscape itself or a painted landscape? Um, and how about Pollock splatters? Pollock splatters are absolutely art. Absolutely, 100%, absolutely. And there's an and, and it's pretty uh, it's pretty easy for me to uh, explain the difference between various things, and we're gonna see as we dive deeper into this take the interesting directions that people ran with what I said about AI art, um, but the uh, 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 but the reason why I uh, I care about intention as a part as a component of art is because I think that that is, in my opinion, an essential portion of art. Even if you cannot always discern the intention of an artist because you can't get into their mind, the fact that you can, that you can engage with it, that you can connect with the person who made it, that to people can connect together oh, uh, uh, through a piece of art that was made by somebody else, that is an essential part of art. 
art is an expression of what is inside us that we have trouble expressing to others. Art is an expression of what is inside us that can be shared with others. Art is not simply something that pleases you or something that just appears in front of you. I don't think that a sunset is art unless, and I'll take, I'll say this, that's partially because I'm an atheist, I don't think that anybody hung the sun in the sky. I think that it can be beautiful. I think that it can be breathtaking, but I don't think it's art. I think art is something different. Um, is the person making requests of an AI the artist? Or, or is the person making requests of the AI an artist? I think an argument can be made much more strongly that the prompt that is used, that is fed into an AI is more artistic than what the AI produces itself. What the AI produces is, uh, is, is a facsimile. It is a simulacra. A, 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 an AI essentially searches through a number of representational images looking for something that fits the definition of what has been given to it on a piece of paper. It is only a response. It can only search to find things at the, at the behest of the prompt. The prompt would be the artistic portion. Is the careful art sampling of art, artists' paintings to feed the AI an artistic process? It could be. I do think, by the way, I do think that the code that makes up an AI, uh, an art, an art creating AI, can that itself can be a work of art. But I don't think that the images that the AI produces are in and of themselves art. Uh, back when photography first came out, there was an opinion that it wasn't art, and I'm curious if this is the similar intent as Demon Mama. No, I obviously think photography is art, but you guys have to recognize that there's a significant difference in these processes. Like, this is one of the things that really annoys me. Uh, something that's really annoyed me in this process is, and to be fair, uh, I should have known this going into it because the people who think AI art is art are uh, mentally robotic. No, no, that's too mean. I'm sorry. I told you I was gonna get mean. I don't wanna be too mean. Hold on, let me, let me, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I lost my cool there. Um, there, it's a binary thought. It's this idea of if you don't think AI art is art, well then anything that uses technology must not be art. But that's not what I said at all. Not even a little bit. Um, uh, uh, can we define AI art? Well, see, that's the thing. It's really hard to define AI art. And this is part of the reason why I don't have strong opinions, like I don't have good opinions about AI art because what you're calling AI art is not even AI. That in and of itself is a sales pitch that you are repeating. What we, what we identify these days as AI art is not an AI at all. There is no artificial intelligence. There is nothing even close to an artificial intelligence operating that. There, what there is is a, a sharpened but rote machine, a machine that can search for words and find images that have been tagged with those words and go, yes, these are the thing, and then it can smush them together in a way that hopefully will satisfy your query. So a synthesizer or a photograph is a tool. It is a thing that we can use to do something with and we can tweak it. And I do believe, by the way, that there are pieces of AI art that, um, are, that are engaged with by a person uh, uh, on top of the generation by the AI in such a way that it makes it art again, like it re returns back to being art again. And, or, or I guess it never was art to begin with, but it, re it goes into the, the realm of art because there is someone with intention going in and tweaking and making changes and adjusting this and making something that they made. But, but the original AI art is not that, okay? It isn't. Um, it's not that at all. What you have instead is, uh, is, is a husk. What you have, okay, let me ask you this, okay? If you came home, okay, one day, if you came home and your partner, let's just pretend, maybe you don't have a partner, but let's pretend you do have a partner or a best friend, okay, if you don't have a partner. You came home from work and you walked inside and, and you walked up to your partner and your partner said, I love you. I hope you had a good day. Mwah. 
and they did it exactly like that, you would probably feel like there was something wrong, okay? You would probably go, what's going on here? And then if you walked to the other side of your partner and you saw that there were a bunch of clicking gears going together and a little motion sensor, and when you walked in the door, the motion sensor clicked on and it turned green and then the gear clicked into place and it's produced the, I love you. I hope you had a good day at work. And then you were like, wow, that's my girlfriend. I sure love my partner. The truth is, you would not, of course, of course, no one would argue that that is your partner. That is just a machine that, see, that rec re reacts to something happening, a stimulus occurs, and something pre-programmed pops out. Okay? So, um, and this is functionally what we have going on. Um, uh, 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 is, so... Um, what we, what we have going on here is something akin to that. You have a machine that can recognize prompts and it can produce uh, a, it can produce what it has been told already by somebody else. It can produce what it has been told to bring forward. There was one of these. Uh, let me see if I can find the actual one. Hold on. I wanna just real quick, hold on. Let me see if I can find the one that I'm talking about. The one that really prompted my, got my brain juices flowing. One second. Let me just see real quick. Hold on. Just one second. Let me see if I can bring this one up. Here it is. This is the one right here. Okay. I'm going to show you this one real quick. Okay. This one right here. So this piece of art right here, they say it's soulless. Okay. So what we have right here is uh, two vaguely human shapes. One, this one gets pretty mushy and strange and a little bit eldritch horror -y. It kind of looks like it's forming two sphincters here and there's some guts sort of piling up in the background. Now, what when you look at this, what I see is, hello, honey, I am happy you are home. There is no, there is no, this, this, this is a, we can presume that this is uh, uh, imitating the image of a kiss. And we are supposed to know, well, kisses are a good thing. It's a representation of a representation of a representation. It is so far from the actual thing. Art is supposed to capture and evoke something meaningful. There, art is about meaning. It is about something that can be derived by other people or by yourself. So what we have here is something that loosely fits the shape of what we, what we see as a kiss. We see this and the machine is telling us, you should feel glee, feel glee, witness kiss, feel glee. But that's not what's happening. This is not a person. This is not another person. This was not made by a person who observed people kissing and has feelings about creating what it looks like to kiss or what it might feel like to kiss. It's not about, it's nothing. It is just an image imitating the loosest form of a kiss. So that's my, my general basic opinion on, uh, on, on, on AI art, especially AI art in its current form. Now, some people are going to go, oh, you're just a primitivist, neo-Luddite, uh, 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 you know, art snob, whatever. No, 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 please get back to me when you develop a sentient thinking machine. Uh, I'll see if you could, if you can beat, if you can get to sentient AI before climate change happens, we'll talk again, okay? We'll have a, we'll have a second conversation once you create a, a, a machine that is sentient and sapient, a machine that is not just uh, taking in uh, uh, you know, inputs and putting them out. And some people might say, oh, well, aren't humans just taking in inputs and, t and putting out outputs? And I would say, if you think that's what humans are, please go touch grass. Please go touch grass, okay? Because um, humans aren't just uh, 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 response stimuli machines, at least fully uh, actualized humans um, aren't. Uh, <laughs> aren't uh, just response stimulus machines. Humans 
observe the world. They internalize the world. Their brains and their emotions and their feelings, and maybe even if, you if you're a dualist and you believe in souls, I don't, but their soul processes the things that they see thinks about them, recontextualizes them, re, uh, 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 you know, reimagines them. And then some people decide to try to capture that internal process. Even the most copycat artist, even the most unoriginal artist is engaging in a process that is so much deeper than that which these, these AI art projects can engage in. There is no meaning or direction behind uh, behind the decisions made by an AI. So, you probably shouldn't have gotten high before watching this. No, no, it's a great time to be high. See, that's an interesting thing right there too. Uh, humans being able to get high, humans can experience alter altered states of consciousness. We can reflect upon our altered states of consciousness. We can take our experiences in an altered state of consciousness and we can replicate it by engaging in an, art, in an artistic practice. It's not an easy thing to do. It's in fact a very messy and fuzzy thing to do with a high rate of failure, but so is it. Okay, Thick Boy says my algorithm changes on LSD. Guys, okay, this is where I, I don't actually care if people call me a, 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 a primitivist or a Luddite when I say, please do not think of yourself like a fucking algorithm. Humans are not algorithms, okay? Algorithms are incredibly basic. They're incredibly, incredibly, phenomenally basic. In your mind, there are an incomprehensible amount of ever-changing, changing by the moment, algorithms operating at once which make you who you are, not just one. Not just two, not three, not even a thousand, millions, an incomprehensible number of competing concepts and ideas firing all at once and finding harmony nonetheless. Humans are literally biological machines. I think I, uh, that's not even true. Humans are not, are, are a, are at the, at the, oh God, how do I, how do I do this? People aren't dolls. People, people have, people, a, a person, me, you, we are made up of millions of other life forms. I hope you understand that. J let's be clear about that. You are made up of millions, billions of other life forms. You are an entity. You are a conglomerate. In your guts, there are all kinds of creatures that only live because of you and, the, and, they, and they, what they produce feeds your body. Your cells of your guts are not you. You are not just the, cell, the cells of your guts, but they are a distinct living creature. Yes, I agree. Niana, the computer is the single worst metaphor for the brain. We do not store information the way computers do at all, and computers are inferior for nearly everything except for certain types of mathematics. And that is because computers are precision machines, but humans are fuzzy machines. If we can be called a machine at all, we are a machine that can handle unpredictability. We are chaos dwellers. We are chaos makers. That is what all humans, even the most orderly human, is a machine of unfathomable chaos. AI art is no such thing. AI art does no such things. Yes, and that's true too. Killjoy says even calculators are, 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 are incomplete because they, they do rounding errors all the time depending on how they're programmed to round. Yes. Imagine an algorithm that can write itself and does so constantly. That is sentience, correct. And of course humans do logical fallacies, but not just logical fallacies. We don't just do logical fallacies. We do fallacies, we do imperfections because that can introduce evolution. Because it is our imperfections, it is, it is our imperfections that led us to where we are now. Every single step in evolution in the entire universe is a process of, of, uh, 
of, of deviance from a norm that does not exist. There is no norm, you understand. Maybe sentience is the wrong word. I might be using sapience. I'm sorry. So I sometimes get those two words mixed up and I apologize. Isn't AI art a collaborative effort uh, of a lot of art artists with their own purpose? No. And let me explain why, okay? Let's think about, uh, let's think about some of the things that, uh, that, a that AI art fails on that normal art does not, okay? AI art obliterates context. And I mean that, AI art obliterates context. You do not know what it is using to make the art. You do not know, you do not know what it's drawing on and you cannot know. Barring maybe some, uh, some AIs that would store that data somewhere for you to go and find out exactly what it grabbed and all of that. But even still, those decisions were made arbitrarily. They were not made with intention. There wasn't an inspiration there. It was simply trying to match a word to a picture and mix that picture in to satisfy the query. There was no creative action going on there. It is tag, 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 match, mush, tag, tag, and it can get different. You can program it over time to make different decisions, but at the end of the day, it is acting on a on the identification of, of of tag and tag, 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 mush. That's it. So what you, what you actually have here, um, uh, what, what you actually, you know, what you have going, wait, hold on. I'm trying to, to remember, uh, here, hold on a second. Is an AI art collaborative effort of a lot of art artists with their own purposes? No, because what you have in real collaboration is something that can be traced and connected. Okay, imagine this. Even if, uh, let's say you find a piece of art in a, you know what? Let's say you find a piece of art in a Goodwill, okay? You're in a Goodwill and you find a piece of art that strikes you. It's interesting. It's amazing to you. You're like, what the hell? And it's very clearly, you know, you can, you know, it, I'm not talking some kind of like random, like, you know, like, uh, like a decommissioned fucking motel piece of art. I'm talking about you find something unique and you go, wow, maybe you can't find who made it originally because there's something standing in your way. But that piece has a source. It has a human source and if it wasn't human we don't have to be humanist about it because i'm not really a humanist but it has a a thinking intelligent source you know that even if you can't necessarily find it you can take a quest to go find who put this here how did it get here why was it made what 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 was it what was its purpose Additionally, it has a context uh, that it exists in. It is pulling from other things that exist in the real world. What AI art does is only that last one. AI art only can pull from what already exists in the world and remix it according to a pre-programmed set of steps. That's it. So while the, uh, the process of, of creating uh, a AI algorithm can be an artistic process. What that AI algorithm produces is, in my opinion, not art. Uh, Red All Theory says, in your opinion, does art need to be made by a human with intentionality or a sentient being with intentionality? If so, another species makes something artistic. Would you be willing to call it art? Of course I would. In fact, I would be willing to call art made by actual AIs art. But what we, do, what we have now is not that. So there are a number of levels that I'm acting on here. First of all, it's the idea that there is not an actual intelligence here. Um, uh, and to answer that question directly, uh, yes, I, I, I don't believe that a human is the key here. I think any um, like thoughtful intentionality, a mind must be able to create it, a, a, a mind that is capable of thinking, a mind that is capable of introspection. So you consider an actual AI to be sentient? If you have managed to create a machine that can introspect and improve uh, and has, uh, you know, uh, feelings and emotions that a, 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 a mind that is able to engage with the world and evolve, of course, sure, that's perfectly fine. But we don't have that, we're not even close. We're not even like, a, we're not even a little bit. We will not know when we will do that though. We're not even close.
We're not even, even not, we're not even remotely close, okay? Remember that monkey that took a selfie or those painting elephants? I count that as art because a creature capable of having basic thoughts made it. I would as well. Of course I would. A monkey picking up a camera, learning the machinery of the camera, and taking a picture because that satisfies it and makes it happy is very, it is a, a rudimentary form of art, but it is art nonetheless. Bottling sunshine with the tier two sub. Thank you very much. I'm an artist that travels to conventions to sell their work and the number of times I've heard people ask if someone's original art was AI generated kills me. We're gonna get to that part of it too. There's no way that monkey knew it was taking a selfie. Well, you don't know that actually, but I, I do, uh, I, I don't know. Maybe it was an accident. And in that case, maybe it's not art, but I don't really think that's super impactful. But yes, I do believe elephants at least seem to have developed, have uh, demonstrated the ability to create art. So let me just, now, now that we've gotten this laid out, now that I've, I've sort of laid out the, um, uh, the basic, my basic ideas, we're going to pop over and we're going to have a little bit of fun and I'm going to start being a little mean, just a little bit, just a warning so nobody gets their fifis hurt, even though you probably will, okay? This was the original tweet that I made. So we're moving into a little bit of a different segment. I've laid out my basic take, and now I'm gonna tell, I'm, we're gonna laugh and react to some of the um, derangement that I, I beheld on Twitter, okay? So, um, so here's, here's my take. AI art is about as close to the literal definition of the term soulless as you can get in a material sense. What I'm trying to say here, it, I think is pretty clear, I saying that I don't literally believe in a soul, but what we generally categorize as a soul, emotions, meaning, substance, uh, uh, that is not present in most AI art, basically any AI art, until it becomes a part of something greater. For example, we'll, we'll talk about this, we'll get to this. And then I said, machines rotely reproducing motions without any emotional substance. There's no history, there's no intention, there's no connection to others. There's only the vague shape of emotional signifiers. This portion right here, the vague shape of emotional signifiers, was inspired by that kiss painting. That kiss painting, I say with double quotes, um, from earlier. It, it, was, it was me going, wow, this is literally just a machine going, observe, kiss, feel feelings that kiss should make you feel. It doesn't know what a kiss is supposed to make you feel like. It doesn't know uh, what makes a kiss special? Those people in the paintings aren't real people. They aren't based on real people. They're just images in the vague shape of human, and they don't even do a very good job at that, in the vague shape of human replicating something that you've asked for. You've asked a machine, show me kiss, and it says producing kiss. So that's why I said it's only the vague shape of emotional signifiers. Then I said, basic activation of our brain's emotional symbolism recognition is not art, not in any meaningful sense. It's at best an emotional gruel. It fills us up in time and space, but offers no emotional, I left out the word emotional there for space, but it, it, it leaves us with no substance, sustenance. I don't consider that to be art in a meaningful sense, okay? And of course, a lot, lot, a lot, a lot of responses, but we're gonna look at a couple of specific responses because boy, oh boy. Now, like I said, this got 47 quote tweets, um, some of which are very, very stupid and useless. Um, uh, others were um, mildly compelling. Most were a giant waste of my time, but we're gonna talk about some of the ones that I felt like, uh, you know, I felt like stood out, okay? So, um, here we go, okay? This is the first one, okay? This one's really, really petty, all right? Here we go. Keffels blow, blew you out for real? For, oh, it was really funny. But that was super funny. But I would, but also, Keffels was, I, I, I assume Keffels was agreeing with me. Maybe not, but <laughs> whatever. It was a good tweet. I'll show you Keffels' tweet in a second. Here we go. So here's this one. This person says, what if I'm just not capable of appreciating any of this primordial soup jargon and I just want to see something cool? Now, I don't think I used any primordial soup jargon in my original, original tweet. I don't think that any of the words that I used would be qualified as jargon. Um, but, uh, 
wanting to see something cool to me is a very, let's just say childish interpretation of what art is, okay? Um, there are lots of cool things that I would not consider art because I think that art is something that goes a step beyond to connect humans to other humans, to create meaning, to, uh, to uh, make statements about life, not just something cool. Uh, uh, there are lots of very cool things, but again, um, this is one of this is one of the responses that I just felt was this was not like a popular response or anything I just thought it was a little bit a little bit weird I thought it's weird to say to try to call what I was saying primordial soup jargon I feel like my sentiment was pretty straightforward and please feel free to tell me if you know what terms I use that were jargon um but yeah I feel like it was willfully uncharitable but you know, now we're going to go to another one. This this one, I got multiple of these, by the way. This is just the one that made me laugh the hardest, okay? You guys ready for this? When AI gains consciousness, y'all are the first people it will come after. Bazinga. Yeah, um, okay. Oh, all right, if you if you say so, um, if it's if it's gonna if it's gonna come after me in its current state, um, I have a feeling that it's not gonna do a very good job. Um, oh no, is the se is this the segue into Roko's Basilisk? This is this is where I said I was gonna mention Roko's Basilisk. This is the most pathetic version of Roko's Basilisk. Roko's Basilisk, like okay. For those of you who don't know what Roko's Basilisk are, Roko's Basilisk is the idea that uh, basically uh, that in the future it, it is possible that an evil a that it is inevitable that a evil vengeful AI will be created, and anybody who stood against it in the past will be uh, will basically be resurrected and tortured by the vengeful AI because you didn't help bring about its its own existence. So anyone who stood against the creation of this vengeful AI will be retroactively punished forever because it will it will be so powerful and amazing that it will come after you. Now, um Roko's Basilisk is and let me just be um let me let me just be um really blunt. Fucking moronic. If you spend any time worrying about Roko's Basilisk, please consider talking to a therapist. And I mean it, I mean it, I'm dead serious because it is, it is a, it is more deranged than religion. I would unironically feel like you would have a better life if you converted to Christianity and worried about God being angry at you because Roko's Basilisk is, it is, it is genuinely the paranoid delusion of methed up programmers living in a basement programming all day, every day, and they've convinced themselves that there are already, that they're trapped in a machine that will punish them and resurrect them from the fucking dead because they believe that technology is literally magic, that we will be able to create a time traveling in the future. Humans will create a time traveling AI that will be able to bring you back from the dead to torture you. It is, that is, oh my God, please, you are not living a healthy life. And I mean that, I mean that 100%. It is, that is like the expression of, of like malignant, uh, of like malignant, obsessive, paranoid delusions. It is, it, it, it's, it's no, it's, it's worse than I, I'm a, I have no mouth, but I must scream because I have no mouth, but I must scream is like a story about a future in which a couple of people are trapped under the watch of an all powerful AI. Not that an AI is going to retroactively punish you for not programming hard enough. Roko's Basilisk, like I said, meth fuel delusion programmer who just does meth to stay up and program 24 hours a day fucking freaking out going i'm not programming hard enough i'm not programming hard enough and this this right here is the even stupider version of roko's basilisk because this is a person who thinks that if 
<laughs> this is a person who thinks that if you criticize shitty AI art too hard now, that the evil AI is going to punish you in the future. It is the most like, holy shit, you need to re rethink your life type thing, okay? Uh, and by the way, just so you guys know, in case any of you are, are, are struggling with, with the worry about Roko's Basilisk, it's the same, I, 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 let me give you a magical cheat code to dealing with Roko's Basilisk. Fucking do it. Torture me for all of eternity then. I said I would say the same thing to the Christian God. The Christian God who would threaten to torture me for all of eternity because he wants me to behave a certain way? Fine, do it then, whatever. I, you are gonna find a way to torture me for all of eternity anyway. I'm not gonna bend to your, to, to this imaginary uh, 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 being's will just because it threatens to torture me forever. Do it then. So what? If you're gonna torture me for all of eternity, at least I'll have eternal life. So yes, that's that's the other type of response that I received that made me laugh. Is this like weird, p pathetic Roko's ba uh, Roko's Basilisk, uh, um, uh, other other shit? Okay. All right. Now, <clears throat> now this one is funny. Okay, this one's really funny. So this one is from a guy named the Cybersmith. And and hold on a second, before you all jump the gun, let me just, let me just, t this one's gonna get interesting. Can a robot write a symphony? Can a robot turn a blank canvas, take take a blank, blank canvas and turn it into a masterpiece? And then the iRobot robot, which I don't know if you guys know this, I just want you to, um, I just want you to remember, um, j just so you know, uh, iRobot is a fictional movie. It's a fantasy film just so that we're clear. Um, yes. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. Yes, and we can do it cheap. Cope and seeth, puny fleshoid. And then here is the last image with, uh, you know, Will Smith crying on it. That's supposed to be you. You're, that's you. They, they depicted you as a crying Will Smith. You've been owned, fleshoid. Bazinga, buzzing, 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 buzzinga. Gotcha. Um, but but I, I I just thought that this would be really funny because in case you're wondering, um, so this guy, here we go, here we go. <clears throat> Allow me, al join me as we plumb into the depths of the cybersmith. Okay, just please consider the following scenario. It's five to 10 years from now. You're sitting in a restaurant enjoying a lovely meal when I walk in, accompanied by my wife, my children, and my human pet, whose genitals are covered as it enters on all fours and is wearing underpants. If my family and I then make an order of our own to the, at the table next to you, in what way have we infringed upon your freedom? What rational basis do you have to demand that we leave our beloved pet at home? Oh, heck it all. Let's consider a more extreme scenario. It's five to 10 years from now. You're sitting in a restaurant enjoying a lovely meal when I walk in without my wife and children for whatever reason they haven't accompanied me with my surgically modified human pet wearing a collar being led in by its leash. My pet has been spayed and neutered. Let me get the other image just real quick. Oh no, wait, where's the other one? Where's the other image? Ah, here it is. I'm sorry. Now here's the correct one. <clears throat> My pet has been spayed and neutered, though you can't tell because its genitals, along with its boobies if it's a female, have been covered up. It has no vocal cords and it walks on all fours, not by choice, but because its toes have been removed, along with the tendons in its ankles being severed. It may also have had its thumbs in the last two segments of each finger amputated, making it easier to care for. No fingernails to trim, after all. Perhaps it's even humanely removed its eyes, making it less independent. Even in this scenario, I haven't infringed upon your liberties. Irrationally prejudiced is precisely what you are. Now, wait a sec. Now, hold on a second. Before we jump to any conclusions, I'm j I, I do think that's a little hot, okay? That's like a little, that's a little bit hot, okay? That, that, I, and I'm not gonna come for any of you. I, too, think it's hot to uh, imagine having a 
perfectly black latex helmet that you could slap on someone's head that would essentially erase them and make them your servant. That is, uh, you know, very, very hot. It's extremely kinky. Uh, that's hot. I think it's really cool, the idea that, you know, you could put somebody into a machine and they would come out as basically your drone and they would no longer have a name, but instead would have a number and a barcode. You know, I think that's pretty, you know, I think that's pretty hot. But it's not really, you know, it, you know, it just, I just wanted to contextualize. Uh, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, okay, so maybe this guy then is a little bit based, okay? Maybe this guy is a little based then, okay? Maybe. Or, or maybe, or, or maybe not, okay? Oh my God, hold on, okay. I'm gonna read this, okay? Hold on, I'm gonna tell you what the response was and I'm gonna get the real one so you know that I'm not lying. So, <laughs> my face went boy piss, I love boy piss. Ha <laughs> ha hot, if this devolves into that other trans fetish though. Ha <laughs> ha, my daddy uses me as his urinal and makes me so happy, okay? So this gets pretty sexual. Now, what you will see here is a deleted tweet. You see this? And you see the at the cybersmith here. This is the same person who is arguing with me here, the same person that made this pet one. And what you see here is a deleted tweet. Now, what that deleted tweet said was, when I see posts like this, it makes me think that I need to go out and kit and abduct and abduct uh, every trans girl that I see because uh, otherwise uh, they're just going to go and get themselves raped. I wanna find the original. I'm gonna see if we can get the original one. I know that Doe has it, but that's what it used to say. That's what the deleted tweet said, okay? So just remember that. When you look at this, yes, we can do it cheap. Cope and seeth, puny fleshoid with this boomer ass meme. That's the type of intellect that we're like, that we're like, you know, grappling with here, you know? So now we get to, now, uh, now that we've left the uh, psychotic cyber fascioid. Oh yeah, by the way, uh, if you go to this guy's like, hold on, I think, I think you can find an example right on this guy's fucking page. This guy, hold on, let me see if I can find them here, hold on. Okay, most of what they tweet is just coomer shit. Uh, getting mad about about race-based benefits yikes uh, a lot of coomer a lot of coomer shit a lot of coomer shit uh, a lot of coomer shit 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 even more coomer shit uh, apologia for Russia apologia for Russia ooh that's nice all right interesting wow so, uh, yeah, you know. Yeah, very strange. So, so, you know, just wanted to see, uh, it sucks, it sucks. They wrote a, they wrote a really hot scenario in their weird, they wrote a really hot projection scenario in their weird argument about, uh, other things. But yeah. The authoritarian sub-personality? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna enter in to a very special category, okay? Are you guys ready? This is the category. This is my favorite category of the, uh, this is the, uh, the, this is the, this is my favorite category. Okay, ready, ready? Ha has been professional demon mama haters making me sound cool. So here we have uh, the ancient the ancient former streamer who now is just a demon mama hate watcher this guy replies to tons of my tweets and also just is a gigantic uh, hate watcher. Also wrote a 900 word manifesto about how I'm dangerous to women and uh, dangerous to um, uh, dangerous to uh, uh, trans people. Um, and he and he's got this nice. He's got a classic, super creative image of Metal Gear Solid 2, uh, saying that I sound like a Metal Gear Solid 2 villain. And this is my favorite type of post. And the reason why is because it only makes me cooler. 
It only makes me sound even cooler. All of these people love Metal Gear Solid. Metal Gear Solid is a critically acclaimed, guaranteed video game classic. People will be studying Metal Gear Solid a hundred years from now. And part of that will be, be because it's over the top writing was actually good. Yes, it's a little cheesy and funny at times, but it was also fucking awesome. And t saying that my off the cuff, literal fever induced AI art tweet sounds like the, the dialogue of a villain from a really fucking cool game only makes me sound cooler. Jessica Metal says, this just simply proves again, they see you as some sort of supervillain as opposed to a person on the internet with opinions. Yes, they do. They think I am a literal supervillain. I mean, again, this is somebody who wrote a 900 page manifesto about me because I disagreed with them once. Um, but, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's it, and by the way, there was a lot of these, okay? So that, there's that one. There's like three others that did that exact same tweet. Yeah, here we go. Here's another one. Look, somebody did the exact same tweet again. No, sorry, 900 words. And then we had another type, okay? Which is uh, the, the other type of commenter on this is people who were mad that I was saying anything at all. Um you know, people saying that, oh, uh, I'm very mad that you're commentating on this. What a waste of, what a waste of time. And other things like that. Like, I mean, things like this. It makes people like you mad, so I think it's funny. Uh, uh, you know, uh, shit like, uh, this betrays a lack of imagination. Okay, if you say so. Matrix level meta, uh, of meta commentary on art. Um, The Matrix is a, a pretty good movie and a lot of people liked it. Um, B. Sadu says, sometimes your takes make you sound like Palpatine or Magneto or Loki or some other cool villain. Yeah, I know. Sorry. I'm just really cool and dark and I have a ro dark romantic energy and, you know, I'm a final boss on Twitter. I'm not even, I'm literally the final boss that they'll never beat. They have failed. They have come up against me and they keep having to reload earlier saves and then fail again. They can't win. There is no way. They've all obliterated themselves, be becoming deranged about me for no reason at all. Do you think your transness has to do with this dislike? No one reacts this way towards others, and I've seen you the way that I've seen you treated it, or maybe it's just destiny. Um, it's a couple of different things. It's not real. I don't think it's as much to do. I do think, like, people are way more likely to get super angry at a trans person saying an opinion that other people have said before um, in different ways. They'll get really mad when the trans person does it because, you know, you know, you're speaking out of line or whatever. But I think the real reason is that there is a literal cult online built around hating me so uh people talk uh, uh, you know accuse me of having a sex cult but unironically there has been a hate cult built up around me since i started streaming it's actually off the rails um yeah really weird um you know it's cold. here's another one that was interesting art luddites are bad and annoying hmm so I don't really know how me saying that I think that the AI art in its current form is very vapid and empty is uh, art Luddism. Um, but that said, the Luddites were more base than you might think, actually. The Luddites had a point. The Luddites had a lot of interesting points. The Luddites pointed out that, that industrialized society was being used to displace people specifically from the places that they lived where they had sustenance to places where they had no hope of ever regaining any sense of independence. The Luddites were very explicit about the fact that not that technology in and of itself was evil, but that technology was being used to oppress. Whoops. Now, not everything they said was correct. Not all of the Luddites were correct either, but the Luddites did have a bit of a point, though. They kind of they did have a bit of a point, though. They were kind of dead right. They were kind of literally correct about that. These are the same motherfuckers say that art has no definition when you point out three big different colored circles are not art. That's not true, though. I don't say that art has no definition. I just say that the, the definition of art is subjective, and then I make an argument for my definition of art. It's really funny. People got like 
like again, people got really, really mad about this. Oh, I want to see if I can find real quick. Um, uh, 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 there's one here that was just somebody retweeted with all caps and it made me laugh really hard. Yes, this is another one that made me laugh really hard. Nobody speaks like this! You aren't writing a thesis! Talk like a normal human! And I have to wonder, what? Is this how, is, is this how you speak in your daily life? Do you scream like this? Do you react this strongly to like words that are like slightly longer than four, four letters? This is a weird thing that happens on Twitter is that people get mad if they don't like what you're saying and then they say that you're not, that you're saying that you're using big words. It's very weird. I don't feel like I used any big words. I, I really don't. I feel like I mostly used normal sized words and I just have you know a little bit of skill in the way that I talk about things but there's a lot of these a lot of people seem to have issues with um I shouldn't say a lot of people a handful of people seem to have a lot of issues with um with me using big words to which I should say maybe you should read some more maybe Maybe you should grow your own mind before criticizing other people. Um, and, uh, and, and then there was a couple of ones that I think, um, okay, so there were a couple that I should say, I think started from a place of good faith and then became incredibly stupid immediately. So are you guys ready? Are you guys ready for this one? Here's, here's one of them. There's an episode of Star Trek TNG where children on the Enterprise are given devices that allow them to create limitless art of any form without any previous training. I imagine that anyone who thinks AI art is an art would also have to agree that those children weren't making art. Well, that's interesting because no, that's not what I said at all. Those children are the intentionality that I'm talking about. Those children are using tools to create things. Uh, they're not just plugging in prompts into an AI. It's it's very, very, you know, different. Um, but then they followed it up with this. I'm also pretty sure that being descriptivist about what is, isn't art is also sort of very fascistic. Folks, Twitter, it's a wash. Nothing good can be gained from Twitter. Twitter does something to people's brains that makes them incapable of thinking at all. They just go, thing I don't like is fascism, thing I like is fa is not fascism, thing I don't like is is not fascism, or is fascism, thing I do like is communism. It's just, wh what? It's not even, I'm, I don't even have a hard definition. I literally say in the thing, I think, you know, I've I said this across multiple, anybody who was engaging with it would have seen me say, I think art is subjective. I just don't personally consider AI art to be, you know, what I'm looking for. That, that That's not what I consider art. It, it lacks in certain qualities that I think take it to the next level uh, 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 that art does. So a lot of these people that I got response, response uh, I got responses from started somewhat sane and then became incredibly stupid. So now you guys can see, I, I did indeed make quite a lot of people very angry with my take, um, but I decided to push it just a little bit further because I think that this, this sort of thing starts to illustrate what I'm talking about. So here you go. Don't know how to paint. Don't want to spend time learning how to paint. Hire someone to steal the Mona Lisa, muck up her eyeballs, and then erase all signs of attribution. My face win, I am now a Renaissance artist. And this was the, uh, this was really, really fun for me because this is how I feel about it a lot of times. Okay? Uh, I know that, like, I try to be good faith, and like I said, I'm going to try, I, I said in this part, I, I specifically said, I was gonna be as good faith as possible for the first half, and then I was gonna get mean. But I'm about to get really mean, okay? And here's the mean part. The fact that people are so up in arms emotionally about AI art perfectly 
perfectly encapsulates what I say about our shit-ass culture all the time, which is that we live in such an impoverished culture that, that we get excited about even the most hollow, shelled out, basic stimuli response. You see a color on a page and you go, oh, thank God, thank God, thank goodness, at least I have something. We live in impoverished existence. We have an impo Americans especially have a completely impoverished view of art. They cannot understand fiction. They cannot think any deeper than things flashes in front of me. Mo Americans, uh, so many Americans have this approach that's basically anything that is jingling keys in front of my face is art. As long as there is noise going on around me so that I cannot hear my own thoughts and feelings, so I cannot remember that I live in a devastated concrete wasteland. They just want anything, anything that'll dangle in front of them, anything that'll make them go, I clapped, oh, I fucking clapped. It's, yes, it is. It's Elon Musk shit. It's, it's people who think that uh, they, would, they would be satisfied in an existence where they would go home and sit in front of a screen that would produce images that have no meaning, that were not produced by anyone, that just trigger activation phrase. Like they go home and they see AI generated boobies and they go, that make me horny. And then they see AI, AI generated penis and they go, I do not like that. And then they see another pair of AI generated titties and they go, I like this with no connection to why any of that has any meaning or any purpose whatsoever. The, we are, we, people are so fucking socially bankrupt. They are so culturally bankrupt. Like literally, oh, I, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, but a Funko Pop, it has more energy and, 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 and soul than a fucking AI generated piece of art. It is genuinely the most black pilling, black mirror, Reddit soy bullshit that I've ever seen in my entire life. And I beg you, please, for the love of God, drop Mickey Mouse's fucking dick for five seconds and go read, watch, engage with anything different, anything else. For the love of God, log off the internet and boot up a real piece of art. Taste what it's like to feel something for once. Go do something with a human being for once in your fucking life. Holy motherfucking God. Instead, these people will lap up out of the trough of the dumbest, most uncreative tech bros in the universe who build, who build an algorithm that can steal art faster than anything. And these fucking seals will sit there and go, oh, it's so good. It's so good. It can steal. It can steal from the only people who make this word world worth living in. Do you guys realize if you build tools like this to replace art with soulless mishmash fucking husks, you you will have a world where no artist can eat. Then those algorithms will only be able to reference other algorithms and continually, you will continue to have a, an increasingly soulless and bankrupt understanding of art until you have nothing left. You feel nothing, you are nothing. You are a number that looks at a number that looks at a number and then you die. Is that the existence that anybody wants? Because that is, the, that is the worldview of the people who shill the hardest for this shit. They want to make a infinite, a infinitely exploitable machine that can shut, the, shut you the fuck up so that you don't notice how bad your life is, so that you don't notice how fucked up everything is, so that you don't ever do anything other than sit there and clap like a goddamn seal. Do you know why? Do you know why you go to the movie theater and you walk away with a, a with the like deepest sense of ennui that you've ever felt in your entire life? Do you know why you walk outside and no matter how much, no matter how much you do, no matter what you do, it still feels like fucking shit? It's because you've been sold the idea that a McDonald's cup is fucking art. You've been sold the idea that uh that 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 produced by fucking committee garbage is art. It's not. It's a, it is manipulating you. Unironically, it is manipulating you. You are being manipulated. This shit is manipulative. It's trying to imitate real art. It's trying to imitate what you search for when you reach for art. When a human seeks out art, they are seeking out connection. They are seeking out understanding. They are seeking out meaning. And what you are being given is uh, meaning substitute. You are being given meaning flavored 
beverage. You are being given the American cheese of fucking art or worse. Or you're being given a piece of, of fucking, a piece of wood that has been sprayed with cheese flavoring. And then when you say, hey, that doesn't seem like a cheese sandwich to me. They go, oh, yo, oh, who's a fascist now? Are you a fascist? Oh, are you ableist? You think that just, what, what if somebody didn't have any arms and the only way they could make a grilled cheese sandwich was to use their head to press a button to spray the, the corporate cheese onto the wood what then you ableist unironically it is oh my god it is a brain rot of maximum level of, of it is a black pilling level of brain rot but you want to know the darkest part of it all you guys ready are you guys ready for the darkest part because so far so far i haven't even i haven't even breached into the truest black pill part I've only mentioned the fact that you are being sold a lie. I've not told you what it's actually for, which is that all of these stupid fucking AI art learning bullshit are being designed to fuck you over. They are being designed to starve off and remove the need for humans in yet another thing. They are being designed taking actual human labor, digesting it, whether you want it to or not, stealing, Using the fact that people have to display their art publicly, they are stealing that image, stealing the style, literally sucking the soul out to create a facsimile, a satisfying facsimile. No, you can't have the real thing. You can only have the imitation of an imitation of an imitation. All of these, uh, all of these uh, algorithms, are, are, are using art to learn for free. They are products, they are prototypes being used to gather data for free from people, from, and, and on a level you can't even imagine, okay? I want you to think about these computers, what they can do, what these AI algorithms can do is they can search very quickly, quicker than any human ever could. They can search through a library. They cannot create a library. They cannot, uh, create the contents of the library. What they can do is they can search through a library that already exists of thousands of books that took an infinite amount of human life and human hours, effort, blood, sweat, and tears went into writing the books that are contained in a library. They can search it faster than anyone else, steal it faster than anyone else, and print out something that vaguely satisfies the most, uh, the, the, the people with the lowest bar for art imaginable. That's what they can do and they're gonna do it, and they're gonna keep doing it, and they're gonna keep stealing that. Those actual human beings who spend their life, who, you guys, you guys know, are, in our culture, the starving artist is, is considered the, the true path of the artist, because most artists don't make fucking any money. They make art, and their art enriches the world, and they don't actually get rich from it. They just die. They just starve. Their art is created for its own purpose. And now these fucking corporate machines can go through, filter through it all, and create pathetic, embarrassing imitations of it that they can try and tell you is art so that you, so they can manufacture consent for a future in which humans can do nothing but labor all day, every day, where humans increasingly no longer need to exist. And not just humans either all other creatures a completely machinized world that is what the idea the ideology behind ai art really is now obviously most of these teams putting together these little projects aren't thinking about it that way they're trying to develop an interesting tool and they have developed an interesting tool but don't try to sell it as art don't try to pretend that it's doing anything other than stealing deeply stealing on a level you can't even imagine G grabbing and compiling and mushing together thousands of artists just to satisfy a typed in query Yes, Killjoy says, this is just the early 2000s survey bullshit that led to clickbait algorithms. They're gonna make even worse curated ads where the fucking ad uses your goddamn cookies to design the perfect advertisement. That's the goal. The goal is to make it so that the world, that, so that capitalism can be, can, can be sustained without you. 
without you being able to, to have to touch the, the domain of the gods. Jeff Bezos and Mark and uh, and Mark Zuckerberg and all these fuckers will be able to sit in their palaces of literal gold without having to hi without having to give money to anybody because they have an army of machines that you helped build to put you in your place. So there you go. Stop, stop having such a childish approach towards art that you are fooled by something that is worse than Funko Pops, by something that is worse than the worst D Disney produced drivel. Stop it. Think, use your brains, have some fucking self-respect. Have some fucking self-respect. For the love of God, recognize you are a living, breathing, feeling being. And it isn't satisfying to just look at a fucking McDonald's cup and be told that that is all there is to existence. It is fucking not, it is, it is not acceptable, okay? It's not an acceptable life, at least not for me. If it is for you, good, more power to you. At the end of the day, whatever, art is subjective. If you really love AI art, I'm not gonna tell you anything else.